Hello and welcome to my TED Talk. I'll be covering some weapon building and weapon stat explanation for a gray zone in this video. First, I decided to make this video as I witnessed a lot of misconceptions, misunderstandings, and some poor decisions I have seen players make in Grey Zone Warfare. This is by no means some kind of rant where I am shaming people for not knowing in-depth weapon knowledge, not inherently knowing firearms terminology, nor am I telling the developers they did something wrong. So far as I can tell, the devs did a lot right. The failures I see really come from a player base reacting in accordance with other games they have played and just doing what they think is right and there's no fault there. Second, you should not have to know the names, functions, and possible effectiveness of a real-world weapon part or accessory in order to play a video game, regardless if it is a quote-unquote mill sim game or not. Grayzone does not exactly come with a manual on weapon parts and it would take an average player some experimentation and a fair amount of money to figure out the right weapon platform for their playstyle, even if they have said knowledge. This leads me to my last point of intro, which is that there is no best weapon in this game. Just because a tier 3 weapon vendor sells an expensive version of a pre-made rifle does not mean that is the right weapon for what you are going to be doing, or even a good build for its intended purpose. This goes for ballistics as well. With that, let's explore the basics of building a weapon and why you need to thoroughly investigate a weapon platform before committing it to a combat AO. I'm going to go deep on nomenclature and some vocabulary here, so I will try to show explanations on screen along with some basic pointers on how things affect recoil, target acquisition, armor penetration, cyclic rates, sound, reload speed, and ammo capacity. Section 1. All weapons in Grey Zone are comprised of parts that can be bought or discovered in the world, and not all are created equal. Every functional combat-ready weapon must be comprised of a barrel, a receiver, a magazine, a way to stabilize the weapon in your hands, some form of charging mechanism, and some way to aim it, whether that be iron sights or optics. Obviously, rifles have the addition of stocks, possible foregrips, and a muzzle device, although pistols also have muzzle devices as well. So far, we don't have to go much deeper than that since they don't have recoil springs, bolt carrier groups, slings, or trigger groupings accessible. All these parts affect certain aspects of the weapon's usability. If you right-click on any weapon, they all share the same breakdown of possible stats, and that is accuracy, recoil control, arm stamina drain, weapon handling, reload time, and fire rate. The design in this game is intended for you to balance the stats based on your playstyle, but the real-world designs of these parts lend themselves to an obvious tactical choice, and I find it much easier to lean on the purpose of the design rather than forcing the design to fulfill my tactical decisions in combat. As an example, you can use a hollow sight and a foregrip, an extended magazine, and a tactical stock for an M700 attempting to turn it into a close quarters weapon, but it will never live up to the basic ease of use of any modern assault rifle. Let's use the M4 and AR platforms as an example. We'll start with your base accuracy, which is calculated as MOA, which stands for Minute of Angle. This is an acronym, not a word. Stop saying MOA. Minute of Angle is how much the bullet deviates from its true zero. It comes down to 1 60th of a degree per point of MOA, or more simply, uh, each full point of MOA is a deviation of 1 inch per 100 yards. For example, I have a M4A1 reading at 2.15 MOA. That means it has a possible course deviation of 2.15 inches per 100 yards, which also means your shot pattern at 100 yards could be as much as 4.3 inches, since that is 2.15 in any direction from zero. This is likely why you miss the target even when you have a perfect sight picture lined up on a target. Trying to hit a moving target that is shooting at you from 100 yards takes some calm discipline so you can get your sight picture lined up with where the target is going to be, all while you are calculating the possible deviation of the round. This is why I almost always choose the body shot over trying to track the target's head in a mobile exchange of fire. The only part that affects the MOA of a rifle is in this game is the barrel. I do see almost everyone throwing the 20-inch barrel on their rifle the moment they have access to it, but this may not be the right thing for what you plan to be doing. If you plan on sniping from 100 yards or further from your target, this is the barrel for you. 
You may notice it also increases your muzzle velocity by 20%, assisting in armor penetration and projectile flight time. While this is your best bet for long shots, I really don't think this is needed for what I would consider your average engagement range. At close range, your insanely low MOA is meaningless, and your plus 20% muzzle velocity is causing overpenetration on the target. The tissue damage you cause will eventually be fatal, but they will still be returning fire until that happens. Stopping the target at first engagement should be your objective, so you will need to change something. Now you have a few choices here. You can change your ammo type to something slower, swap out the ballistic for something with much less penetration so your kinetic values punch instead of pierce, or use a barrel that is not increasing your muzzle velocity. To get further into the weeds with this concept, we will need to talk about what kind of bullets you are using, which we will cover later on. Again, the changes you make here will likely mean a change to long range shots while improving damage at your mid and close range. This is the balance you have to negotiate based on your average engagement range. Section two. Second, let's talk recoil mitigation. This is the second stat in the lineup when examining a weapon for good reason. If your accuracy is failing you, you will need to engage the target repeatedly, so less recoil the better. On the AR platform, you currently have six possible weapon parts that affect your recoil. That's your stock, possible stock pad, foregrip, heat shield rail system, the buffer tube, and your grip. I did not include the muzzle device or the gas block because they do not affect your recoil control stat. They affect your recoil reduction stat, which is different but just as important. Before we get into that, remember, all these variables are percentages of another variable that is not displayed to the player. My M4 has a recoil control of 44%. That's 44% of what? Are we assuming that if that variable is, say, 100, that it's the same variable on all other weapons? It isn't. I have a base level M4 and an AK-74 that both outperform my Mark 18 in actual live fire, but have technically worse numeric stats than the Mark 18. Let's break down recoil calculation a little further to better illustrate this. Start recoil reduction on the Mark 18 M4. By the way, the Mark 18 is a designation created by NAVSPEC Warfare Crane, or just Crane, to define just your standard M4 with a 10.3 inch barrel with the intent of putting a suppressor on it. This is to shorten the weapon down to navigate close quarters and use a suppressor to allow operators to communicate over the sound of their shots. Uh, back to recoil reduction, the Vulcan F1 I use gives me a recoil reduction of 20% and the gas block has 7% recoil reduction. So that's 27%. Let's pretend the base variable of recoil on this rifle is 100 flat. With this muzzle device and gas block, that is now 73. Now calculate recoil control stat of 44% on that number, and you get 32.12. This is the actual number you want to discuss. If we take the AK-74 and pretend that it, it has the exact same base variable of 100 to represent the rifle itself, factor in a muzzle device that has a recoil reduction of 40%, and a gas block that has no recoil reduction, and then calculate the overall recoil control of 29%, <clears throat> and you get an overall value of 17.4. <laughs> that may seem extreme and lead you to believe that the AK-74 should be a recoil as a laser beam, but the base number for this rifle is likely not 100, like the M4, theoretically. It's probably more like 120, 140, maybe even 150. If we run the numbers at, say, 130, the final variable is 22.62. Even then, this explains why I get much better patterns with the AK-74, even though the recoil control is only 29%. Again, this is why you need to examine these attachments and weapon parts instead of assuming that the newest thing available is the best for what you are doing. Maybe the parts reducing your recoil control reduce your arm drain stamina or weapon handling so you will need to figure out if you can live with that trade-off. Please read what each part affects carefully and judge whether or not this is going to help you how you play. Section three. The next part I want to cover briefly is arm stamina drain. I say briefly because uh, in the game's current state, it does not seem to be a critical stat for most. Also, this is one of those stats in the game where a plus is bad and a negative is good. 
you are mitigating the drain so if there is more of it, it is draining faster. You can max it out for yourself at the cost of other important stats, but you will only gain a few seconds more of focused ADS time. You can usually get about 15 seconds on average with a zero arm stamina drain on your AR, and maybe only a couple more seconds with some negative values. For a full breakdown of exact numbers, please visit Mohawk6 on YouTube as he has done a full test in-game with different parts. Uh, shooting the weapon drastically impacts your ADS time more than just the parts, so for me, I play a very specific way to mitigate this value. Crouching doubles your time, too, and going prone more than triples it. If I need to ADS for more than 15 seconds, it's because my target is far away and I need an accurate shot. I'm fine dropping to one knee to get off an accurate shot. You should not be ADSing for that long either way. Uh, you will get too myopic and lose your sight picture background, but this is getting into tactics more than weapon parts, and that'll have to be a different video. Section 4. Next is weapon handling. This, oddly enough, is not as critical as people seem to be making it, but then again, it comes down to playstyle. I don't run around with my sight picture up all day like this is Call of Duty, so this has been my dump stat in a nerdy D&D sense. <laughs> I tend to punch out to a sight picture as I pie corners or if I know I am about to shoot. I rarely walk around ADSing the entire time in anticipation of a target walking into my sight picture. The main thing weapon handling affects is the speed at which you bring your weapon up to a sight picture and supposedly how fast you switch weapons. The weapon parts that affect this stat are your optics, foregrip, stock, and grip. I've dabbled in ramping this stat up to the positive, but currently run a weapon with negative 11 weapon handling and I don't notice that causing any problems. Section 5. Next, and more importantly to me, is reload time. The only things that affect it on the M4 is the charging rod handle and the magazine itself. Obviously, keeping this as low as possible is my priority. I choose to not run the big 60-round mags as a trade-off for slower reload speeds because I am rarely using enough ammo from a single magazine to warrant using them. Please, 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 consider not using some large-cap magazine at the cost of reload speed. Get in the habit of pushing rounds into each mag when you have a second instead of being a lazy goofball. Section 6. I do want to touch on fire rate real quick as I boosted mine a little bit. All you need to do is use the JP GS 10D gas block to get that 6% boost, but if you are locked in a CQB scenario like YBL, or the HQ in Fort Nareth, switch over to full auto, fire, and dump a burst or two in close quarters to dispatch an enemy. This just gets more rounds down range faster in an automatic fire. Uh, this has been my own compromise on overpen at close range. I can punch the armor, but I'm causing minor wounds, so I might as well cause a lot of them very quickly. <laughs> Section 7. Lastly, let's talk ballistics. The rounds you run are what is actually doing the damage, not the rifle. The rifle is merely the delivery system. I run the M855A1 pretty much all the time. Mostly because I am facing armored targets at medium range. This is also because it has a negative 7% dispersion, the stat that dictates a secondary aspect of your accuracy. This is not armor penetration. For this stat, negative is better and positive is worse. Penetration of armor really comes from the weight of the projectile. The muzzle velocity, the weight of the projectile, and the angle of contact. I did like the HPBT rounds for hitting non-armored targets in the early areas, but it was way too fast of a round to cause adequate damage at close range. A quick note on ballistics here. <clears throat> a high-speed projectile has a kinetic value that resembles a spike or a needle penetrating armor and flesh very effectively. The problem is overpenetration. It actually is going so fast that it is causing minimal damage. You may cause a bleed or get lucky enough to hit a bone, but it's causing a small wound. If you get a slower, heavier round, you are talking about breaking several ribs and causing organ damage, even if you don't even punch the armor. Instead of a kinetic value of a spike, this is like now a flying brick wall hitting a person. Armor or not, they will likely not stay standing. 
I could talk about this for a while, but simply want to cover why they expose these values in the game. Again, balance what you're trying to achieve with how you intend to achieve it. This logic is also why I believe the AK-47 to be underpowered in the game. The round should be flying much slower and is much heavier, stubbier round. Armor or not, direct contact at almost any range, and you are lucky to stay standing upright, much less live through it. If you tend to engage at long ranges, use a high-speed, high-pin ballistic. If you are close up, a heavy, slow bullet will punch guys down quicker allowing you to move on to the next target confidently without having to dump a hail of gunfire at your enemy. Section 8. There are other stats I could cover in depth here, like weight, dispersion, distance fall-off, ballistics, firing from an elevated or depressed elevation, or even loudness. But what I have already covered should get you to the point of acquiring what would work for you. One final note I do want to cover is the use of suppressors. I do not run a suppressor for multiple reasons. Main one being use of sound to direct enemies around the battlefield. Knowing that they will react to my shots mean they will likely be heading in one direction. I tend to shoot and reposition to somewhere where I have the advantage on enemies responding to where I was just shooting from. This has worked a lot so far. Suppressors also don't seem to improve accuracy in the game, which they should at least a little bit. Currently they only hinder accuracy through the dispersion stat and it's so negligible that it might as well not be there. They do affect recoil reduction like a muzzle device, but not as good as a muzzle brake. They also flag you as a player in PvP. When people hear the sound of a suppressor, they know it's most likely a player. Very few AI enemies carry a suppressor currently, so keep that in mind. By the way, suppressors are not as quiet as you think. It augments the sound by several decibels, but it's still as loud as a car door being slammed. I hear suppressors being fired by other players all the time, and I can almost always tell where they are. All in all, I hope this helps inform people and educates you enough to feel confident in building out a rifle or two for yourself. I've seen so many people complaining about one aspect of the game or another when it comes to weapon performance, and 90% of them can be fixed by adjusting your weapon platform to what you are doing. Experiment a little and see if you can accomplish a feasible system for how you play. You don't have to play like I do to survive, and you may be way more skilled than me at this game. I've run into a lot of folks that are very good, so keep playing, figure it out what works for you, and let me know if you figure out something that contradicts anything I've covered here. I am more than open to hear you out. Thank you, and I hope to see you out there.